So good morning and uh, welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church, uh, those worshiping with us here and uh, also those who are visiting us here online. I'm Scott Burho. I'm the council chair and uh, Daniel wasn't able to make it today. His uh, family uh, picked up a virus. Uh, he chose rightly not to bring that to us and uh, is home taking care of his family. He did record a sermon though that we will show. So uh, I won't be giving the sermon today, but be doing all the other things on the, on the outsides of that. Um, and so now I'd just like to open us up in prayer. Dear God, we know you are everywhere, even with us here today. And we confess we've not always acknowledged or even recognized your presence. We thank you for the many blessings we've received and the lessons from the trials we've endured. Please help us to honor your son Jesus in our words and our actions. We ask a special prayer this morning for Daniel and his family. Let us worship here in a way that brings glory and praise. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. So now we'll have our opening song, Heart of Worship. I would invite you to stand as you're able and remain standing when I read the scripture after the song. It's all about you, Jesus. 
standing for the scripture, but before I read the scripture, I did want to say that for those who may have brought a backpack to be blessed, we are going to do that. We'll do that uh, right after the sermon, and if you're new with us, if it's a first-time visitor, if you'll fill out the little card that's in front of the pew, we would love to be able to contact you afterwards if you would like for us to, and so now I'd like to read our scripture reading, which is uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of God for the people of God. Be Please be seated. And now, hopefully, through the power of technology, Pastor Ray will give his sermon entitled, No Holiness But Social Holiness. Good morning. If you're seeing this, that means that, unfortunately, COVID has kept me from being able to be with you this morning. Uh, but I am so glad that you are able to, to gather wherever you may be. Uh, sorry that I'm not there for all of the students and all of the staff and teachers as they get ready to head back to school. I am excited for you and I wish you the best in the year to come. And I know I look forward uh, to the blessing uh, of the backpacks that is going to be coming up soon in our service. But as we prepare for this uh, time of hearing the word, will you join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So many of us might know the famous beginning of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Well, you could go on with it if you want to. But in a way, the beginnings of Methodism could be described much of the same way. And while we often talk in Methodism all about John Wesley, the beginnings really start with the younger brother, Charles. Charles is following in older brother's footsteps as he starts to attend Christ Church in Oxford. And as he does, he starts to see some of his religious disciplines that we talked about last time as we gathered. They begin to wane. Some of those things that his mother, Susanna Wesley, had instilled in him, he starts to back off from. In essence, Charles just becomes your typical college kid. Now, John, who is serving in a church by this time, notices this, and he's not too pleased by it. But there's nothing really he can do at the time to change Charles's ways. One day, however... Charles comes back to his senses. He realizes the faith that he has been missing, but at this point he's not sure how to get back to it. And so he writes older brother John for advice. Now John at this time just so happens to be going through his own theological breakthrough. John is serving in a secluded rural area, giving him lots of time to study the mystics and he was interested in becoming something like a hermit, a monk-like person who would dwell with God in solitude. But in this time of serving in this rural area, John found something important. It didn't work. And he finds that one of the most crucial elements for our spiritual growth is each other. And so he gives this advice to his brother, Charles. And Charles takes the advice and he runs with it. 
Charles begins to meet with a good friend at school. He starts to study scripture together with him, worship together, pray together. And soon this begins to grow into a small group of friends, one that became popular, almost infamous on the campus of Oxford for their religious fervor. They were called names like the Holy Club, the Bible Moths, the Sacramentarians, and the Methodists. And, as they say, the rest is history. You know, it's kind of funny that this form of spirituality that the Wesleys tapped into, it runs so counterintuitive to our society today. We talk about our own personal salvation, our own personal Jesus. There's a whole movement going on about spiritual but not religious, which essentially is saying that I believe in something, but I don't need others for it. John Wesley vehemently disagreed with this. In fact, he said so when he was talking about the scriptures. He said, solitary religion is not found there, that is, in the scriptures. Holy solitaires is a phrase no more consistent with the gospel than holy adulterers. The gospel of Christ knows no religion but social no holiness, but social holiness. In other words, what John is saying is that this walk that we have, this journey with God, the idea that we do it alone is simply ridiculous. And it's not something that we find in Scripture. And he has a point. If we go back and look at the earliest church, that is the church of Pentecost in Acts, we look and see how it's described. And we see that it says that they devoted each to they were devoted to each other and to the apostles' teachings, to fellowship, to breaking of bread in their homes and prayer together. That the believers held everything they had in common and sold their possessions and gave it to the poor. That every day they continued meeting in the temple courts. We find that the earliest church was all about life together. Even later, when the earliest church begins to struggle with this idea of life together, we see the author of Hebrews, as we heard read today, help remind them of who we are as a people of God. The author says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another. See, Methodism at its roots didn't create or invent anything new or special. It just tapped into a truth that for some reason we keep forgetting about. And that truth is that we are part of each other's spiritual journey. That we need each other. We need those people who hold us up when our hearts are broken those people who come and visit and pray with us in the ER. We need those people who challenge us, who hold us ac accountable to the path, who help us to, to stick to those disciplines that we have talked about, that we are striving for. We need those people who encourage us, that help us to feel confident that we are enough, that we are loved, that we are gifted. We need each other. Over the years, this is an idea that has been lost. So much so that even the idea of membership in a church is one that many people don't even care about anymore. Many people see membership in a church now as something like joining a social club. You can ask what's the purpose of membership and people say, well, you get a vote in the church or you can serve on certain committees. And if that's the reason, no wonder nobody really wants to join anymore. But that's not what membership is about. In fact, when we look at that word member, we find that this word is at its heart a word that talks about how we are connected to one another, just like a member of a body is connected to other members. Members in a church, when they become a member, they make a promise 
to the church. And the church makes a promise back to that member that they will encourage them, that they will help them in their faith journey, that they will hold them accountable. One of the amazing things is that every time somebody joins, not only does the congregation make this promise to that member who is joining, but they reaffirm their own promise that they have made to the others in the church as well. You see, this is something that is really powerful if we let it be. This idea that we can hold each other up to be the people of God, the people we are supposed to be, the people striving to love as God loves us. This idea that we are connected to each other and without each other, we are nothing. This is a powerful notion that we as Methodists have simply tapped into and honestly as Methodists have forgotten. And if we can reclaim this, this idea that we belong to each other, that we need each other, then we are going to be doing something powerful and special, not only in our church, but in our community and world. Because we're going to be showing the world something so drastically different than what they have experienced from others. And that is a sense of each person and how they are needed, how they belong, and how you yourself need another person, need each other as well. So go and be a people encouraging one another, lifting each other up, praying for each other, breaking bread with one another as we strive to love as God loves us. Amen. If Daniel was here, I would thank him for that uh, powerful message. Uh, and clearly we do, and as I sat and reflected on this message myself, do need each other and rely on each other. Uh, and if you need an example of that, just being here at 930 and seeing the worship Every, the team working together uh, to prepare and getting songs right and uh, getting the video right and all that. It, this would not happen uh, without everybody working together. And I'll give you an opportunity to demonstrate it here. We're about to do our hymn. So the hymn, the next, our next hymn will be Blessed Be the Ties That Bind, which is number 557 in the hymnal. And please stand as you're able. Please be seated. So this is the part where we're going to do the blessing of the backpacks. And so we're including staff and students. If uh, someone is a teacher or administrator in school, you're welcome to come up. So if uh, those of you brought backpacks, please come up. You're welcome. Uh, your family's welcome to come up. If you 
didn't bring your backpack, but you're going to school, but you have a backpack, why don't you come on, come on up here and we'll bless your virtual backpack. Because we got a little gift for you anyway. So you, you, you got you to you come up to pick up the, the bag. You don't have to come up. I, I shouldn't say that. But. So for all the students, um, we have this for you to take after we do the blessing. And if there are any staff or administrators or any parents who are brave enough to come up, uh, you can take this bag. Uh, Glenda Pearsall made those bags for everybody. I thought there would be more of you, but I'm going to do uh, what I was going to do, even though there's a few of you. I would now like to, well, today, we have before us backpacks, some to be carried, some that are still at home for, and to and from school. The backpacks will contain work to be done and work to be returned. The backpacks will hold books to be studied, tools to do the work, and all sorts of other things that will find their way into and onto those backpacks. Someday, those backpacks may seem heavier than others. They may seem so heavy that it's hard to walk. These backpacks represent the hard work required of students and the hard work that must be done to serve others. So please, if everyone would please pray with me. Gracious God, we lift up these students, the teachers, the administrators. The students commit themselves to learning in the year ahead, and we ask you to bless all of them. Further, we ask your blessings on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork each student carries from home to school and back again. Let these blessed backpacks remind each student that the congregation prays for them and supports them. We pray that the teachers and administrators will do their work with kindness, integrity, and love, and understand that each child is more important than any rule. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who will seek to follow, who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. So thank you. Make sure you take kisses back, students. Adults? No, no, no. There you go. And so now we'll do prayers of the people. Now is the time for those online to be thinking about what it is that you want to put in because there's a little bit of a delay and first we'll take those joys, concerns, glory sightings from any of you here who may want to offer something that we should pray for. Congratulations, George and Rhonda, 54 years. And so that's a prayer for those who are working the garden and uh, bringing together all the produce. And I understand, uh, Lucy, uh, from firsthand that uh, the, those who come and pick up the food very much appreciate uh, having that fresh food. So thank you. So a prayer for those doctors uh, who will be putting together treatment this yes, week. this week. Any others? Oh, George? Uh, prayer request for the family of Robert Bob Stanley. Robert Bob Stanley.
prayer for a great man. Yes. And if there are no others here in person, online. Yes, uh, from Nancy Ehrenholt. Prayers for my dear friend Karen McLaughlin, who is dealing with illness, and for Greg Keister, who is in hospice care. From Jennifer Mulfair, prayers for all the college students returning to school. Prayers also for their parents, who are returning home without them. And also from Jen uh, Mulfair, prays that Luell continues to recover well. Thank you. So please pray with me. Dear God, we feel your presence with us today. We know that you heard all of our prayers, the joys and the concerns, the celebration of anniversaries, the blessings of those who volunteer their time, the support that we need for doctors, and the support uh, and the blessing of, uh, of great men who are in our lives who we see do wonderful things with their families. Please continue to heal the sick, protect those who cannot protect themselves. Help us to understand the lessons from the trials that you heard here today and that we had go through each and every day of our lives. Keep your hand on us and your spirit with us to protect us from pain and suffering. Show grace and mercy on us and our neighbors so that we may be living examples of your word. We know we worship safely here today because you've anointed people to protect us and they are unsung heroes in the sky, on the seas, some patrolling in Loudoun County, many finding themselves in harm's way patrolling in foreign lands. We thank you for the comfort provided to us each day through so many others who do your work. In your name we pray, amen. And so even though we won't have uh, communion here today, I did want to do the things that we would do other than communion. And the first one of those is to pass the peace. And so I'd encourage you to uh, pass the peace with uh, each one who's here. Kathy started a tradition last week that we're going to continue uh, on today, and so that means we're going to do this all the time. And that's to, since we don't have communion and we're not going to have the Lord's Prayer in there, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer right now. So I'd invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. Amen. And now, with the help of a couple of ushers, we'll have our collection. There are lots of different ways to give. One is uh, the collection plates, and the other, uh, there are some things online uh, if you prefer to do that.
we thank you for these wonderful gifts. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to continue to nurture, witness, and do outreach for our community, and these gifts help us to sustain that. We ask you to continue to bless these gifts and our church. Amen. Please be seated. Before the closing song, oh, please, come on up. Because I just want to thank uh, Rita, because each time uh, I sit and listen to the collection, my favorite part not only is the gifts that come in, but it's, uh, it's your music. It's just absolutely wonderful all the time. And so thank you, Rita, for blessing us with that. And thank you, Barnabas, for joining us. I'm giving us music too. <laughs> so the closing song is uh, going to be Give Us Clean Hands. Please stand as you're able. Yeah.
generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. And so uh, I have two announcements, and then if anybody else has uh, any, we'll take those. The first one I wanted to announce is the thanks to everyone who donated school supplies and backpacks and headphones. We collected 35 backpacks, seven sets of headphones, and three full boxes of assorted school supplies uh, that we dropped off at Round Hill Elementary School on Friday. And uh, they were very grateful, very appreciative, uh, had very kind words uh, for the congregation and the church. So thanks to all uh, who donated supplies. Pastor Ray asked me to share today that the Wesley series that he's been doing on Sunday afternoons, he won't be doing it this Sunday afternoon, but we'll start again uh, next Sunday afternoon. I did go to the first one. I uh, highly recommend it for those uh, who would be interested. And he has uh, also putting it on Zoom. If you want to uh, watch it, uh, it's available uh, to watch, but it's, it's worth it. Um, are there any other announcements from anyone here in the congregation? If not... Uh, I will do the benediction. Please go in peace in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.